On this episode, we hook up the Everlax Power Ultra 206 Pi for the first time in plasma mode. I give you my first impressions of plasma mode. Talk about my new welding cart, and we start the welding table project. Okay, so I got the plasma cutter set up. I'll walk you through that here in a second. First, I kind of just wanted to walk around the new welding cart I bought. I gotta be honest, pretty happy with it. I thought about building one, but um, you know, the more I thought about it, it was just gonna be one more project to take up time. Just a real quick walk around. Um, you can see down there at the bottom, I got a lockable storage uh, container. Which is kind of a joke in some sense because uh, the hinges have exposed fasteners. Um, so I don't know what good the uh, <laughs> the key really does. If uh, someone really, well first off if someone really wanted my stuff they'd probably just load up the cart because they'd have everything they could possibly want. But regardless, it's kind of nice to have a spot uh, for dry consumables. Um, you know, I'll have a TIG rod eventually. Right now I've got uh, welding rod in there, so it's nice to have a place to keep my welding rod nice and soft, uh, dry. Uh, middle shelf is really designed for a welder, I believe, or a plasma cutter. Um, but as you know, I've got a three-in-one, so it works great for me. I can keep my welding hood, um, I can keep my gloves, my chip and hammer, and the shirt I usually wear right there. So it's a, it's going to be awesome because I instead of setting things down on the ground like I used to. I'm just set them back on the cart. It's going to keep me really organized as I uh, have to put the welder up and have. On the back side, we've got our spot for our argon bottle, and safety chains. Uh, one of the things I really like is all of the space we've got for for my different power cords and uh, and leads and whatnot, which is crucial because I've got three of them to take care of: um, TIG torch, stick electrodes, ground electrode. And then my plasma electrode. And so what's really nice, I've got them all to fit on this side. So when I push it up against the wall, I, I protect all of these guys in, in the event. I'm not saying my wife's going to run into this on the way in. I almost ran into this, <laughs> pulling my wife's car in one day. Um, that way, we don't have to worry about, about running over anything. Um, so I leave everything off of this side so I can push that side up against the wall. And uh, I, honestly, I, like, <laughs> it's going to be awesome when I have the table because we'll have everything up high here, I'll have everything I need down here, and, and I think I, I just, uh, for me, this is going to work out perfect. One other thing I'll say about the card is uh, I've used bungee cords, you can see, to strap down my unit on the top. And then one of the downsides, I guess, is of course it's got the tilted, the tilted top base, but... Um, because I've got to hook up my air, my argon out back, and I've got this fitting here. Um, I put a little piece of wood to kind of prop it up so it doesn't angle as far back. As far as hooking the torch up goes, um, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, we have the torch here. Obviously, it goes in the torch, and it's got a little little offshoot. So this is where the air pressure or the air air line is going to come in at your air source, I suppose you should say. Um, then you hook up the control into the control. I, I'm probably not using the right terms, um, but this is for the pilot arc, and then this appears to be a, a ground. Yeah, there we go, pilot arc. Um, I'll be honest, the instruction manual isn't the best, isn't the most well written. Remember, we're talking, this is a Chinese product. So with my day job being architecture, I can always appreciate a drawing, but this is where there's uh, kind of no confusion as to how you hook it up. Um, that kind of shows you right there. And it's much like electronics, like putting a computer together. Obviously, there's no confusing what, what connector goes to where. Um, so that, that was pretty easy. Now, setting up the rest of the, the backside, the air regulator, we'll flip around back and I'll show you, show you what's going on there. That was a little harder to figure out. There's really no good instructions in the manual about how to hook that up. Luckily, Everlast is a sort of American division has a YouTube channel and they show you how to how to set one of these up. Now you might remember from my, my unboxing video I said I ordered the 205P 
but wound up getting a 2 of 6 PI and the hypothesis there was that I just got the updated model. Um, and as, when you watch the when you watch the video from Everlast, um, they're setting up a 205 P and um, so there are a couple things that are a little different. Um, you swap sort of the, the torch and things like that. Um, so be careful there, but that's where I'm going to rely on the manual to have me hooked up right here. But um, we'll spin around in the back, and that's how uh, I was able to take just a miscellaneous kind of uh, bags of parts and get this thing set up. Okay, thanks again in large part to Everlast's YouTube channel. Uh, I was able to figure out how to hook up all of our business back here. And um, fairly straightforward, step-by-step, -step, uh, good video. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it is the last... Uh, model so it's funny that just minor things like the gas inlet gas slash air inlet is over here and this little plugs over there but nonetheless you can figure it out you can kind of extrapolate what you want um, you start off by installing a bracket um, this is a water collector they say uh, the supplied regulator we put in the fittings here and then they supply some tube that goes in the back we've got our hose clamps um, fairly easy to, to put together, but uh, if you just open the bags with no instructions, it's, it's a little daunting. Okay, so real quick. <laughs> oh man, a couple things. First off, the directions suck that come with this. Luckily online there are better PDFs with better English um, written by the uh, folks here in the States. So we have it turned on. Have it set to cut. And um, we can manage our, our amperage, just like in stick mode. Um, I'm going to spin you around back to show you what I found, but we've got the air pressure. Of course, the manual that came with it says to stick between 0 0.02 and point, or 0 0.2 and 0.4. Uh, MPA, you can see that's 30 PSI, a um, bunch of conflicting numbers between the online manual and the manual I got. It said not to run past 65 PSI, so I messed around with my air compressor to try to get it down there, and I think I've torqued off the regulator, it's hissing at me, I think I'm doing something wrong there. Um, turns out the input air pressure max allowed is 85 psi, which mine was set at 80, so my air compressor would have been fine all along. <laughs> and then we'll spin around back here real fast. Alright, so back here you guys might remember I was complaining about this setup. I did find there is actually a lock washer on this, so I spun that off, spun it back on, so we're good there. And then I could not get this back regulator to move. I kept messing with it because it says push. And, and lock, which means push to lock. Uh, I thought I had to push it, you know, sort of like a medicine cap to also unlock it. The trick actually was I just need to pull up on it and then it twists it, but I, I fought that for a while. And you know how that is when you have something new, you don't want to break plastic. So anyway, we have that turned up. I think I've got it all the way as far as it'll go, but um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna mess around with some stuff here before we start cutting. Okay, so I think we're about ready to start cutting. Um, thank goodness for the online manual. It suggested, it says, you wanna cut one eighth inch steel at 20 amps. And every eighth of an inch you add past that, add 10 amps. So, what we're gonna be cutting here on our, our practice run is uh, some quarter inch steel. It's what I was welding on when we did the first review of this uh, in stick mode. And uh, we're going to be using just a little bit under 60 PSI of cutting pressure of air. Um, everything I seem to be recommended said the, the sweet spot was between 60 and 65. But then I heard that the natural range is 45 to 75 for, for most cuts. So just to be a little bit conservative, I'm going a little short. We're going uh, about 58 PSI. Uh, but hey, let's get to some cutting.
think that seemed harder than it should have been, but keep in mind, first cut ever, probably could have better settings on it. Make my air compressor storage tank, um, from what I read, they recommended a 30 gallon minimum size tank. I've got a 20 gallon tank. Potentially, my uh, compressor is a little undersized for the job. Now, again, that's quarter inch plate. So, I'm happy to have a plasma cutter. And um, maybe the quarter inch plate, I need more patience. Uh, maybe I needed more amps. Maybe I needed more. Um, air pressure, I don't know. It was just the first go at it, but um, so I guess the you have to say mixed reviews. You have to say the jury's still out. Um, I'm sure I'll figure out it could have even been my torch angle. You know, again, I've only plasma cut once in my life prior to this point. So, uh, regardless, still happy to have some form of a plasma cutter. So, I'm sure over the, as the, the days go by, I'll, uh, I'll figure this out, but before we shut this episode down in its entirety, I guess I'll give you guys a real quick kind of design episode of what I have in my head for the welding table. Okay guys, so as you remember, uh, the inspiration for this design, yeah there we go, <laughs> is uh, to be like an ironing board. So, um, pretty simple, I'm going to make just kind of like a sawtoothy thing here underneath the, uh, the main frame table part. Um, it's a little long and skinny. Um, originally, I was going to make it all one uh, kind of setup, but I'm thinking it might be too heavy to handle uh, on its own. So I'm going to keep them two separate parts where the scissoring uh, action is its own get up, and then the top is another. And I may have explained this in a previous episode, but back there, whoop, back there is where. Uh, where it's got a it's got a store it's got a rest so I'm gonna make it the same dimension as the end of my shelf there um, because I store my welder in front of it so let me get you guys one quick shot of that okay so again we are gonna make this thing about five feet tall or, well long I guess by uh, oh I think it's about 21 inches wide maybe 22 and uh, the top is inch and a half by inch and a half uh, tube, 14 gauge. And it'll have a couple cross braces if you want to rewind and look at the drawing, you can. And then the, uh, the scissor legs will just be two pieces of two by two, 14 gauge steel, and pipped in the middle. And then top and bottom, we're just going to do some pipe, inch and a half diameter pipe. And then I'll notch out the different sawtooths so I can kind of have adjustable height you know, sprawl the legs out more, it'll be lower, bring them closer together, it'll be higher. So, uh, that's kind of what I have in my head. Thanks guys for sticking around so long. I know it's been a long drawn out day, a long video. Hope you enjoyed it, but hey, until next time, peace out.